Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Crystal Ray Network College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Brianna, and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Christo Ray. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Capital Technology University. Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Benjamin Michaels. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions at Capital Technology University. Um, and let's get started. <clears throat> Over the course of this presentation, uh, you're going to be learning what makes Capital stand out from the other universities over here on the East Coast uh, and why graduates from Capital are so appealing to our uh, recruiters and employers, leaders in these technology uh, areas. Um, and so a little bit about Capital. We are the only private university in the state of Maryland dedicated to engineering, cybersecurity, computer science, and tech management, as well as uh, construction management. Where is Capital located? We are located uh, at this pin cushion here uh, in Laurel, Maryland, right in between Washington, D.C. and Baltimore. Uh, <clears throat> it is a great location because we are in between two uh, very large technology hubs. Uh, which is great for our students to receive internships as well as uh, jobs post-graduation. We are also located 10 minutes down the road from the NSA and uh, five minutes down the road from NASA Space Goddard for our astronautical uh, engineering students. Moving on, this here is a map of our, all of the internships and jobs that our graduates and current students have received uh, and have taken part in. So as you can tell, there are many, many, many opportunities uh, just in the DC Baltimore area, and there's many more uh, throughout the United States. Uh, one of our, our two biggest recruiters, as I mentioned earlier, are the NSA, uh, the DOD, and NASA. Uh, these programs really look for our students because we give them a top tier uh, candidate. Our cybersecurity program is the number one program in the United States, uh, and that designation was given to us by the Department of Defense. Here is a list of our programs. As I mentioned, we have our cybersecurity program, uh, but some of our other more popular programs happen to be astronautical engineering, so literal rocket science. Uh, as well as computer science, electrical engineering, as well as mechatronics and robotics. Um, we, in addition to undergraduate degrees, we also offer a variety of uh, master's and doctoral programs. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, we are accredited by the Middle States Commission on Higher Education, and our engineering programs and cybersecurity program are ABET accredited. So how much does it cost to attend Capital? It is about $26,000 a year, uh, and if you plan on living on campus, it is six dollars to $8,000. So in total, it's thirty-two to thirty-six. Now that is just a base number. 90% no, um, of our student population receives some sort of financial aid. Uh, and so this number will si go down significantly. And the reason I say that is because of this slide right here. Oh, nope, wrong slide. This slide, um, wow, why is my computer acting up? There we go. Um, these are just a handful of our scholarships that we offer. The uh, ones that I want to mention are our merit scholarship, uh, which you can see up here, uh, where you can receive up to $12,000 in scholarship uh, based off of GPA and advanced level courses. We are a test optional school, so we no longer require the SAT or ACT. However, if you do have those scores, you can always send it in, uh, and there's a possibility of getting more scholarship money that way. Uh, we also have a robotic scholarship and a cyber scholarship. 
So for both of those, if you're on a one of their respective teams, uh, then you are granted $5,000 of scholarship automatically. Uh, and with the Cyber Competitors Scholarship, if you attend at least one Capital Cyber Saturday event um, <clears throat> and you are a cyber student, then you will also be granted $5,000. Um, we also have our Capital Scholars Program. This is a full tuition scholarship opportunity where our uh, Capital Scholars can compete for said full tuition scholarship. Uh, students do need to have a 3.5 GPA or higher to be a part of the program. Um, however, if students do not receive the full tuition scholarship, they will always leave with some sort of money. All right, moving on. Uh, this here, come on. There we go. This here is uh, some pictures of our residence hall. Uh, our residence hall is um, all apartment style. So every student, whether they are freshman through senior, gets an apartment uh, with a fully furnished kitchen with a oven, dishwasher, and refrigerator. However, we don't provide microwaves or ovens, or not ovens, toasters. Um, however, we trust you with our robots, so you can, you can feel free to bring one um, if you want. Um, we have singles and doubles. We no longer have triples uh, due to COVID regulation. Um, and then we have a living space for all students. Um, and you can decorate it however you want. You can have a beach day or you can feel like you're living over in Hogwarts. Um, all parking on campus is free, as well as we have a shuttle service for students to go uh, grocery shopping if they don't feel like driving or they don't have a car on campus. <clears throat> we also have... Um, uh, free wireless internet and cable TV for students to utilize. So a few fast facts here. Um, it is a 16 to 1 student teacher ratio, but that is just for our uh, introductory courses. As students get higher in uh, more difficult education, uh, then they will be uh, significantly smaller classes uh, so that you can really um, make that relationship with your professor. 60% uh, of our students represent minority population. Uh, this right here was a typo. It's supposed to say 90 instead of 80. Um, and then we also have what is called the capital commitment. Um, and I'll talk about it in the, just a second, but 82% of students have a job offer within 90 days of graduation. So <clears throat> as I mentioned, the capital commitment. We guarantee that you will get a job within 90 days of graduation in your field of study and at a competitive salary. So, <clears throat> excuse me, at the 91st day, if you do not receive any sort of job offer, um, then we will grant you up to 36 additional undergraduate credits, all for free, so that you can come back to Capital, take a few classes, uh, brush up on a few things, and ultimately add to your resume. Um, okay, and we are a very outcome-driven uh, university, uh, at, if you couldn't tell already. So these are a list of all, or not a list, but a handful of all of the internship opportunities that our students receive. Um, things like the DOD, the Navy, and uh, NASA, Verizon. Uh, really anywhere that specializes in technology, uh, we really help and encourage students to go for those uh, internships. All right, how am I doing? Okay, so this here is the admissions requirements. Um, so for engineering students, we prefer you to have a minimum weighted GPA of 3.0, and for non-engineering students, a minimum weighted of 2.5. Um, now, I do also want to mention that there is this preferred uh, word. So if you are uh, just really at the cusp of these uh, minimums, then uh, really we'll, we will contact you, we'll talk with you, kind of figure out how things are going and uh, your experience in your uh, education. Um, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, this here is uh, additional information. So if you want to ultimately come onto campus, uh, you can uh, visit our campus. Um, we are open for everybody uh, with respect to our COVID policies. Um, and I also wanted to point out this net price calculator so that you uh, can 
get a rough estimate of how you can see your uh, finances will be going through college. Uh, so this is my contact information. You can also contact me at admissions at captechu.edu. Uh, so if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, give us a shout. Thank you so much, Benjamin. Um, next, we will hear from Williamson College of the Trades. All right, good, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for your time and attention today. We do appreciate it. My name is Nafis Akbar. I'm the admissions associate here at Williamson College of the Trades. Um, we're going to talk just briefly to you about a few things that we offer here, our programs, um, how the process works, and, uh, you know, kind of what comes with it um, and things of that nature. So what you're looking at right here is a one-pager. Um, it's go going to give you some general detail to kind of follow along. Um, it just talks about what we offer in terms of our trades. We offer six uh, trades um, currently, and our newest trade is the electrical program that actually will officially launch um, this coming fall. Um, well, I should say next fall, fall of 22. Um, that is our newest trade. We actually sunsetted our paint and coatings technology trade. Um, and this one will replace it, um, the electrical. Uh, that deals with uh, anything with commercial and residential circuitry, wiring, um, any type of hard wiring, things like that. Um, right now, we do not even have information on the website for it um, because it is so new and things are being finalized, but it will be available to you come fall of 22. Um, if you want more detailed information on it, uh, I will actually drop my contact information in the chat so that you have it. And that way you can reach out to me if you have further questions on that specific trade. So in terms of what Williamson is, what is it exactly? What does it look like? So we like to call it a life-changing opportunity, right? Um, we don't mean that in a cliche sense. We want to make um, individuals more well-rounded. Um, and just to uh, clarify, when I say individuals, um, this is an all-male institution um, in terms of uh, our population of about 270 strong. Uh, it's a band of brothers or what we like to call um, a, a brotherhood. Um, so that means that you guys are working together in units in your respective trades, your shops, your classrooms, things of that nature. Okay, so this is a financially deserving opportunity. What does that mean? So we are a no-cost tuition room and board opportunity. Okay, so that means that your tuition room and board um, is covered if you are to be accepted into the program. We get about 400 applicants per year. We have about 100 accepts. Um, so it's a pretty competitive scholarship in terms of what we offer. Um, so you notice I said no cost and not free um, because there is a difference. If I said free, that would mean you would pay no money. Um, there is some things that you pay for, your books, clothing, tools, your fees and supplies. Um, that usually comes out to about $1,300 a year. It pales in comparison to what the actual cost would be to come to this institution. So what does it cost or what would it cost um, for which one board here? It will be about $100,000 to put any one student through the three-year program that we offer here at once. Um, but again, as we stated before, that is a no cost to which one board opportunity to you. All right. So with respect to what we offer, what are our trade programs? And you'll see them here on this one pager. We offer carpentry. That deals with things like scaffolding, rough framing, roof framing, stair building, foundation building, woodworking, and things of that sort. Our electrical, again, deals with things with commercial and residential circuitry, wiring, and hard wiring. And of course, as I stated before, I'll drop my information in the chat. If you want more information on that, I can get it to you on that type of thing. We have landscaping, construction, and turf management. This deals with a number of different things. Um, you're gonna be looking at things, <coughs> excuse me, such as arborist work. So if you ever seen someone doing work in a tree, doing tree work, tree removal, stump removal, branch removal, things like that, that deals with arborist work that's under our landscaping and construction management. You can also treat fields and stadiums. You can also do the beautifying of residential neighborhoods. Um, you can do commercial spaces, uh, colleges, universities, and things of that sort. Um, that all falls under the construction management component. Um, you can also learn about um, different floral technology and things of that sort as well. In addition to that, we have our machine tool technology tree. Um, that falls under the component of learning how to operate and shut down what is called a CNC machine tool. Um, so it's kind of a large, rather large machine. Um, and you'll learn how to also make parts from that machine. Uh, so that's kind of a two-part component under our machine, machine tool technology tree. We also have masonry. Masonry deals with brick work, block work, tile work, trial trade, brick building on the side of buildings, tile work for 
say small rooms and things of that nature. Um, you can do stair building, you can do bricklaying. We actually are entering a uh, bricklaying contest um, in the next few weeks. Some of our seniors um, who are soon to graduate um, this coming spring of 22 um, will be competing against other trade schools in the area, um, what they call the Bricklayer 500. So we're very uh, proud and happy to have those students demonstrate what they've learned over the past two plus years. And we also have power plant technology. Um, so that deals with the transfer of energy. So think about any energy source, um, and I'll give you kind of a simple example. Um, there were a lot of areas affected by the recent storm. So there are power plants that transfer energy. Right? So you learn how to operate and shut down machines. You're gonna do what is called shift work, where you work over a certain amount of time. You're gonna do water treatments and things like that. Um, and it's not just the guys that you see outside, maybe rewiring or you know, working in areas outside of your home or around your home. There are people in those power plants who are transferring that energy back to that power grid to supply power to your homes. So those are the six trades that we offer. Um, we also um, have a second component with Williamson, and that is the academic component. So this is a three-year program. You're going to obtain an associate's degree in specialized technology, along with learning your skill and trade, right? So you're going to be able to have a skill and trade and also have an academic component. We also are starting next fall of 22 an academic track. So three of our construction technology trades, masonry, machine tool technology, and carpentry, we have an articulation with Rowan, which is an academic agreement that's going to allow individuals to graduate from Williamson with that associate's degree that I discussed and go into Rowan University to earn the credits necessary to earn their bachelor's. Right? So that's a great opportunity. So think of it like this. We talked about the no-cost tuition room board opportunity. So you know you're coming out with virtually no debt, and if you want to further your education, you can do so. And that's not to say that prior to this, that Williamson graduates do not further the education because they most certainly have. Um, but a great number of our students also go into the workforce in the respective grades. So how does that work for us? So each and every year we have a college and career fair at our campus. So about 200 companies come out per year from 18 states and they pay to come to our college and career fair. It's because they want to hire Williamson graduates because they know that they not only have a skill set, not only the fact that they're, you know, obviously getting their associate's degree, but they also are high in leadership and character. And that's very important. That's something that is um, not that it's really discussed, but it's something that should be part of the conversation when you're looking for jobs, right? We teach you those things, how to properly build a resume, how to network, right? How to properly interview. We have a professional standard at Wimson as well. Um, our students are, you know, not just in their shops part of the day, they're also in their classrooms. And when they're in their classrooms, they have a professional attire and things like that. And that's not a dictatorship. That's so that you can understand that a parent does play a part and it does play a factor in how you go about your job um, and your career and things like that. So all those components are important. Okay. So again, 200 companies from 18 states come out per year. Um, multiple job offers and hiring incentives are common, right? So that's a, that's a great thing. That means you have options. Our job placement rate is at about 96%. That just simply means that it's comparable to most colleges and uh, universities in the country. And um, we also have uh, a graduation rate of about 74%. So for the associate's degree, and you may or may not know this, um, the associate's degree only yields about a 25% graduation rate across the board, at one in four students. So if you're going for an associate's degree and you look at three of your friends and you look at yourself, only one of you are gonna get um, that opportunity to graduate based on the statistics. At Williamson, again, we're at 74%. So three out of four of you are going to have the opportunity to walk through those doors and uh, become Williamson graduates and, of course, go into your respective fields. Okay. So, other than 1888, uh, we simply want respected uh, young men who are financially deserving to be respected leaders and productive members of society. We want to make you well rounded. So, we're going to teach you about time management, proper study skills, professionalism, all those things that fall into that component. It's very, very important. We want our young men not only just to have the academics and the skill set. Again, we want them to be high in character and leadership. We also offer a number of different a number of student activities, and we have eight intercollegiate athletic sports, which you see on that one page as well. And aside from that, our technical training, academic instruction, and leadership development are all part of what you're going to learn. So again, that's how we're making you well-rounded. That's how we're giving you those best um, practices uh, to really learn how to, you know, administer uh, or not administer, but um, really uh, apply yourself, right? Because it's important to know how to walk into a job interview, not just 
get the interview, but actually know what you're going to say, what questions you're going to ask and things like that. Um, that's why we're very you know, high on that uh, job placement component and helping you get your career started. So um, that's all that I have for you right now. I don't want to bog you down with too much information because I know it is a lot there. Um, but again, I'm going to drop my contact information in the group chat. There will also be a 30 second clip um, in that uh, in that chat. You, it takes um, takes you right to our YouTube page, and it's going to show you our video. Um, it, ju it just is a brief uh, kind of showing of uh, what we have going on at Williamson. So, again, I want to thank you for your time and attention. I hope the information was beneficial and vital, and um, I wish you all well. Be safe, be healthy, and uh, we hope to see you down the line. Thank you so much, Nafis. Um, next, we do have Lane from Westminster College. Hi, guys. So my name is Lane Hume. I am the regional admissions counselor up in um, for Westminster College. And I actually live in Little Rock. So I work with students in Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. Um, so uh, one of our other counselors works with students um, all over the country as well. So I will also put my contact information um, in the group chat um, after my presentation. Um, so that way you guys can reach out to me if you have any questions. So just bear with me for one second while I share my screen. All right. So I just wanna start off with, you know, kind of giving you guys some background on um, what our campus is like, um, big picture. So we're a small private liberal arts school and we're in central Missouri. Um, so we're kind of right in the heart of the country. Um, we were founded in 1851. Uh, we were orig originally an all men's school, um, but we've been co-ed since the 1980s. Um, and we're about 50 50 um, men and women um, and we have students from all over the country um, and internationally as well um, so most of the time i like to start off talking a little bit about the history of westminster because it's really one of the unique qualities that we have so what you're looking at here um, in this picture is um, what we call the churchill memorial um, so that church you're looking at is actually a christopher wren church um, so it's going on 600 years old. So it's one of the oldest buildings in North America, even though it's not original to North America. Um, and the reason we have it is because Winston Churchill gave the Iron Curtain speech on our campus back in 1946. So instead of putting up just a plaque to commemorate um, that really momentous event in history, they wanted to bring over a church that got bombed in World War II. So we're really lucky to have this on campus. We also have the largest piece of the Berlin Wall in all of North America. So that's what you're seeing. And on the left side of that picture. But in the basement of that church is also a multi-million dollar uh, history museum. So we have curational studies, which is very rare for an undergraduate institution. And it's extremely hands-on at Westminster. Um, we also have a really distinguished lecture series that we do throughout every year on campus. Um, we actually started doing that before Churchill even gave the Iron Curtain speech, but it really kind of got a lot more pep after that. So we have a long history of political speeches on campus. Just some fast facts to give you a more idea about our campus. We do have a 98% success rate. So that means within six months of graduation, 98% of our students have a job in their field or are in graduate school. Um, our student teacher ratio is actually updated to 10 to one. I was having some technical errors, so I'm using last year's presentation, but that means that our classroom experience is really intimate. We have about 15 students or so in our average class size. The Hancock Symposium um, is kind of what I was talking about before. So every September, it was actually just this past week, we cancel classes for two full days and we bring in guest speakers from all around the world. Um, and it's really engaging. Our students attend those events throughout the entire two days. Um, just to give you an idea of our keynote speakers, um, the year before last, it was Madeleine Albright, the first female secretary of state in the United States, um, Jim Green, the chief scientist of NASA, and so what's really different at Westminster is that our students get to and really kind of get to know these people. They're having lunch with them. They're interviewing from them for the newspapers. They're asking them questions about their futures and what they can do um, going into the career fields that they're interested in. So it's not like going to this big presentation at other large institutions where it's you and 10,000 people watching this person present. Um, it's really a lot more of an intimate some event that you can kind of sink your teeth into. I try to go back every year, even though I don't live on campus because it's just so much fun. 
Um, the Undergraduate Scholars Forum is a similar thing. We really encourage research on our campus. And so that is every spring and our students that have done research, some of them even publish papers with our professors get to present their information to the campus. And we again, cancel classes on that day. Um, and then just a fun fact, the Smithsonian chose Fulton, which is the town we're located in as one of the top 10, 15 best small towns back in 2019. So even though we're in a smaller town, don't let that scare you away. Fulton has a lot of life and unique qualities. Um, so this is just a list of our, oh, sorry guys. This is just a list of our top programs on campus, but it's not comprehensive. Um, so pre-med track sciences are very popular, mostly because we offer a cadaver lab on campus. Um, so we have three bodies donated and we house them in our science building every year. So our students get to do a full human anatomy um, all by themselves. They're under the guidance of a professor, but they're the ones holding the scalpels. Um, so it's a really immersive experience that's perfect to get you prepped for med school. We also are just an undergraduate institution. We don't have graduate students. So you're not competing with graduate students to have time in those labs. We offer a pre-law minor as well, which is also pretty rare. Most schools just do the pre-law track, but our students actually take law classes on campus, which preps them well for that law school opportunity. Um, and then something else that's unique to us is the security studies program. So this is a program that meshes domestic and international politics and cybersecurity, criminal justice. Many of our students do internships with like the CIA, the FBI. We have numerous people who now work for the Department of Homeland Security. I mean, this is a super fast growing industry as well. Um, so that's a really unique major that can be a lot of fun. Um, and then the mathematical data sciences is our newest program. Um, and that's the fastest growing job market in the country right now. So that's a really good opportunity if a student's interested in kind of programming, data science, um, and math as well. And then kind of unique to us is our self-design major. So if you find yourself having a hard time picking between majors, um, about 15% of our students actually work with their faculty advisor and a panel of other professors to create their own major. And you get to name it yourself and everything. Um, so this really gives you kind of a unique opportunity to do something that is something that nobody else has done before. And it's unique to go into the job market with a degree that nobody else has seen before too. We do offer an honors program. Um, it requires an additional essay. And then we do have a fantastic learning differences program. We are the second oldest learning differences program in the nation. We've been doing it since the 1960s. So we specialize in helping students with all types of learning differences, um, autism spectrum, ADD, ADHD, dysgraphia, dyslexia. Um, we have specialized counselors to work one-on-one -on -one with those students. Um, so it's a really good opportunity for students that are looking for that extra academic or social support. Just a quick overview of student life at Westminster. We have pretty unique housing. We don't do big style dorms either. We have a freshman quad, townhomes and apartments. We do offer study abroad and we offer scholarships for that as well. Um, a unique club that we have among many of our clubs and organizations, we have over 60, it's the Blue Blazers Investment Club. So most of our business majors belong to this club. It is um, a stock portfolio that was donated to us in the 1980s. It was about $200,000 then. Now it's valued over a million dollars. They do all the buy, sell and trading themselves and they go up to New York every two years and open the stock exchange. We are an NCAA division three school. So we offer athletics. We do have a football team and lots of other men's and women's teams too. And we do have Greek life. We have three sororities and six fraternities and we do have fraternity houses. We are having people visit campus. Um, and so you can set up a visit during the week on the weekends, we do virtual visits and then welcome to Westminster's. Um, that should say fall 2022 application. Our application is completely free. We do accept the common app and we do rolling admissions. So that means we review admissions with our committee every single week and we get back to you pretty quickly. We are test optional too. So we do not require an ACT or SAT to be admitted and we don't penalize you on scholarships. We still consider you for scholarships even without those test scores. The essays and letter of recommendations are optional but I do strongly encourage them. Um, and again, we automatically consider you for scholarships. You do not have to fill out like a separate scholarship application. We do have some additional scholarships beyond our merit-based scholarships. You will automatically be awarded if you are admitted um, and I reach out to students directly to let them know if they are in the running for those scholarships and if they need an additional essay. So I wanna thank you for your time. I know it's a lot to hear from three different schools um, and I hope to hear from you this year and I hope you have a good school year guys.
Awesome. Thank you so much, Lane. If you all wanted to turn on your uh, cameras, we do have time for a couple of questions to wrap it up for today. So we'll just answer in the same order in which you presented. So the first question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Benjamin? Um, <clears throat> my advice would be to uh, obviously to go very basic look into what you're interested in. Uh, don't let anyone else sway you into uh, what they think is best for you. You know what's better for you than yourself. Um, and also always look into th uh, third party scholarships. You never know what's out there and what can get you as much money and uh, opportunity as possible. Great, and Nafis? Um, yes, just to pick it back on Mr. Michael's um, statement, make sure your decision is an informed one. That means that you're making an invested decision, right? Make sure too, and this is one of the questions that we ask during our interview process, it's something that we do here at Williamson College of the Trades, is, is this a decision for yourself or for your parents, right? And what does that mean exactly? That means, are you making the decision 100% because you want to, or is it an influenced decision? You want to make sure it's an informed decision and that you invest in that decision because ultimately at this stage in life, the decisions that you make are your own. Your parents will support you, your friends and family, of course, they're gonna support you but make sure that it's a decision that you ultimately want. Um, you know, don't do things based off of how things look um, or even feel, make sure that there's an invested uh, component within that. Great, thanks, and Ling? So I have two, piece of, two pieces of advice that I like to share. The first one is strictly logistical, but if I'm talking to any students that are not seniors, um, like you're a sophomore or a junior, or even if you are a senior and you haven't been signing up for college information by email yet, go to Gmail or Yahoo and create your own email account. That's like your first name, last name, college at Gmail and only use that. It'll make your life so much easier when you're not like trying to sift through 8,000 college emails in your private email or your school email. And then you know where everything is. It will make your life so much easier. Um, and then my more you know heartfelt piece of advice is that create a list of things that you're not going to compromise on. Um, so it kind of goes hand in hand with what um, these other gentlemen are saying. So what are the things that you have to have? And you create that short list and it really helps you narrow down your search process. Um, and then that way you guarantee that you go to a school that you're gonna feel like you belong there. If you start to compromise on certain things that are really at the core of who you are, you're not gonna be happy and you're gonna end up wanting to transfer, which isn't the end of the world, but that's why we're here. We're trying to create a system where we have people that go to a school and they feel happy and they don't end up having to transfer because they realize that they weren't aligned in the first place. Great, that is some wonderful advice from all of our panelists. Um, the next question is, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? Uh, Capital Tech is a very hands-on <clears throat> education experience. So your very first day, you're going to be doing things such as coding, putting together a robot, um, all of the fun stuff that you are doing right now if you're interested in that stuff. Um, and all of that can help lead you to other experiences. Um, so yeah, that's the thing that I want you guys to remember. And uh, as far as Williamson, um, the main thing that we want you to remember is um, one, that you're a leader, two, that you're high in character, and three, that you're making the right decisions. That's what we really want you to remember coming into this institution. We, of course, want you to work hard. You're going to build a brotherhood. You're going to build camaraderie. I'm going to have lifelong friendships, lifelong um, lasting friendships, and those things are all great. But we really want you to think about those components of character, leadership, um, and just making the right decisions, being a good moral character. Those are the things that we really want you to take away. We have five pillars, which is faith, integrity, diligence, excellence, and service. And that is not something we want you to remember verbatim. We want you to use that as a life application in your daily walk, in and out of your shops, in and out of your classes, on and off campus, and beyond your time at Williamson. Again, we want to make you that well-rounded individual. Great, Lee. Um, I think the most important thing that we really want students to remember at Westminster is that education is, it is a lifestyle and it is a process. Um, you don't go to a college, you know, with uh, connect the dots process and walk away with a piece of paper. You go to college, whether it's an associate's degree or a four-year degree or a trade school or not, um, to learn about yourself, 
um, and learn about what you want to do in your career field. Um, and one thing we do at Westminster really well, being a liberal arts school, is we encourage students to come without knowing what they want to do. You don't have to have a major. You don't have to have to have an area that you know you want to go into. We specialize in having that one-on-one -on -one relationship with your faculty advisor that will help you determine some of those things about yourself that maybe you aren't even able to do some inward reflection on, um, but know that it's a continual process. Um, get a major that has some diversity. We don't, we don't know what the world's gonna look like in 15 years. So I get really tired of these situations where we tell 18 year olds, you have to know what you wanna do because you might be going in to study a job that won't exist in 15 years. So you gotta be a little bit fluid and you gotta be prepared. And that idea of education as a process, a lifelong thing, and it really means a lot to us at Westminster. Wonderful. And the last question for you all is, what is one myth you would like to debunk on the college admissions process? Um, the, it's a tough question, really. Um, probably the biggest myth is that we only want you to go to our college. Um, I personally, I want you to make the best decision possible for yourself. Um, and ultimately, if you come to my college, great. If not, I know you made the best choice that you possibly could. Um, I know when I was going through college, everyone was like, go to my school, go to my school, go to my school. Um, but honestly, make the best choice that you can. And um, as far as uh, one is concerned, the biggest uh, myth to debunk really uh, naturally is just that stigma on trades. Um, if you look around you right now in your home, right, your foundation, your woodwork, your scaffolding, right, you turn on the light switch, you're using your plumbing or you're walking up a flight of stairs. Trades are all around you, right? It's not something to look down upon. Um, it's something that is needed. We like to uh, liken ourselves to a bright outlook opportunity through government research and study. The trades are turning upward, right? So there is a need for tradesmen. If something happens in your home with your HVAC or if something happens to your electrical, if your roof caves in or anything like that, then there is an immediate and instant need. So the thing that we try to debunk is that trades are not secondary, they're primary to everything. You walk into a building, buildings don't build themselves, schools don't build themselves. Um, there are hardworking hands at work at all times. So um, that's one of the things that we really try to encourage individuals is that you're doing a service um, for others. We're big on that. Um, at this institution, so, you know, making sure we serve others. And also, as I stated before, making sure we're building individuals of good character. Um, I think for me, it's that the, um, the, the myths that I would want to debunk are a student, a high school student in particular, it is equated to and can be boiled down to just a bunch of numbers. So your, your value is based off of your ACT score or your GPA or things like that. That's not true. Schools care about other things as well and who you are. Um, and we take into consideration, maybe you had a hard freshman year and we can see that you've done better your senior year. Um, so you're not just a bunch of numbers. Um, and then the other myth I like to debunk too is that, you know, college admissions is a little bit of a game. Um, we love our jobs, education is important, but ultimately admissions is a thing that we know isn't perfect at schools that are competitive. So don't be too hard on yourself if you apply to a competitive program and you're not admitted. It doesn't mean that you, you know, didn't have the ability to go there and do well, or you can't go into another institution and do great or be successful, it just means that, you know, it just didn't, you know, the cookie didn't crumble that way. There are lots of times students apply to schools and there's just more students that the school would want to admit than they possibly can. Um, and I just hate to see students just kind of, you know, beat themselves up a little bit too much about the college admissions process because I feel like it's gotten more and more competitive and students, you know, take it a little bit harder than they did maybe 10 years ago. So don't, don't beat yourself up too much. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you everyone so much. And thank you for joining us today. Um, when you do close this window, there will be a link with a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Um, we also encourage you to check back on the schedule to sign up for more sessions. You will be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other recordings at strivescan.com slash Christo Ray. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to our uh, colleges for joining us and our facilitators. So um, have a great day, everybody. All right. Have a good one. Take care, everybody. Be well. Be